Like What's up, up, fellas? How we doing? Good. 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 Look at those. Looking good. I like it, fellas. <laughs> we already have one, but we got another one. Uh, we, so if anyone has, I'll be saying this a lot. If anyone has questions, just put them in the car in the comments or use the question card. It's okay. Mark on the card. And okay, we're here with the starting quarterback of the Rough Riders, Cody Fajardo. And also, thank you, Ariel, for getting these for us. Yeah, you guys look snazzy in the new new jerseys. Okay. okay. Um, on, Instagram, on Instagram, your username is, is Cody for Darden seventeen, which is number seven. Yeah, that's a great question. So, when I was in college, um, I wore seventeen, and that's when I started my Instagram and Twitter. Both of them had the same name. So I've just been rolling with seventeen. And then when I played for the Argonauts, I was number seventeen. And when I played for the Lions. BC Lions, I was number 17. So uh, it wasn't until I got to the Rough Riders where I wasn't able to get number 17. So I was like, you know what? Seven's as close as I get can get to 17, so I'm going to stick with seven. Did you comb your hair? Did I? Or today? Yeah. No, I'm wearing a hat. But if I take my hat off, I have quarantine hair. You know, it's hard to get a haircut nowadays. There's no one who's open, so that's why I've been wearing a lot of hats. I've been growing up my beard, just trying to get uh, as manly as I can get during these quarantined hours. Um, Kelsey Payne asked, um, what are you doing during quarantine? Yeah, uh, for me and my wife, we try to do something fun every day. So we either go on a run, which it's not fun for me, but it might be fun for her. Uh, we did six miles two days ago. And that was pretty tough, but usually we try and go play some tennis or take our dog to our uh, to the park or something. So here's our dog, Sully, if you can see him. Uh... <laughs> can you guys see him? Uh, we, yeah. Yeah, we're... yeah. Yeah, so we try and do something with him. But what about you guys? You guys been doing anything fun? We have four cats, so we've been oh, nice. having fun to do. We've been doing the uh, lives. It's been pretty fun. Uh, nice. Bob Friesen asked, um, how is the oblique oblique. oblique injury? Are you 100%? Yeah, 100%. I'm healed up. i uh, been throwing as much as I can. Um, yeah, haven't had any pain with working out. So all things are good in there. And uh, I'm excited for the 2020 season because I know I'll be going into the season 100% healthy. Any opinion on how the West Standings will shake down in 2020? Ooh, yeah, tough question. The West is always so hard, right? And it's so hard to predict. But I think us, we, uh, we retained a lot of talented guys. And last year, we won the West. So having the same crew or, or pretty close to the same crew, I can see definitely a repeat of winning the West. Um, other than that, kind of let the other guys fight for second through, you know, fifth. Yeah. Um, anyone who has questions, just put them in the, just put, click the question cards and type it in there or just put it in the comments. Um, is, who's been catching balls for you? Yeah, that's been tough. I, uh, I, I've had a few guys that I'm going to get uh, throwing with here soon. So one guy plays for Montreal, uh, Ab Abshire, and the other guy is uh, Lucky Whitehead, and they both are out here on the West Coast, or West Coast, East Coast, and so hopefully I can get thrown to them soon. The problem is I haven't been able to throw much because of the quarantine. They've been locking up our parks here um, with all the turf and stuff, so um, I hope I can get thrown soon because I, I know that I personally need it, and uh, it always feels good when you can go to the park and throw the football around. Yeah. Or for me, go in the front yard and shoot the ball around. Yeah, I saw your guys' hockey stuff. You guys are uh, pretty pretty dang good. I don't think I could skate as nearly as good as you guys, but I can't skate. <laughs> I, I you cannot play basketball. I can't. <laughs> That's the brotherly competition I like to see. 
Is your wife or dog sick of you yet? <laughs> um, I think our dog is the true winner in this whole thing because we never leave him. Uh, we've, we've left him in the past, like my wife going to school and stuff, but uh, he's been the true winner. We've been giving him a lot of love and a lot of attention, but I don't think my wife's tired of me yet. Maybe she takes it out on me when she puts me through these workout videos on the TV because those are pretty tough. So, but I don't think I've gotten on her last nerve quite yet. Good question, though. <laughs> Dawson asks, how much do you love Rider Nation? Oh, my gosh. It's incredible. Just to be a part of a team like this. And I remember when I signed last year in February that uh, I, I signed and everybody was, like, flooding my mentions. And I was like, this is nothing like I've ever, you know, been around. So uh, winning our first game, especially our first home game, was truly a, a memory I probably won't ever forget just because – the stadium was packed and then all the love and everyone reaching out afterwards and just, you know, having belief and faith in me. I think my favorite thing about Ryder Nation is the family aspect. Like everybody feels like a family. You can go, I mean, obviously I'm playing games, but when my wife came up or when my dad came up and they were just walking around the tailgate, everybody's so accepting. Hey, try our food. You know, here we have drinks for you. So that's what's really cool is just the personalities and the hospitality that the fans Share. Um, will you go to Norm Man 601 asked, will you go to the NFL or stay in the CFL? Yeah, I, uh, I personally, my whole life, I've wanted to play in the NFL. I had an opportunity and I got released by the Raiders. And then the CFL was there for me when I, no one else wanted me. So for me to turn my back on the CFL would be really hard just because they've been with me the last five years and allowed me to play football. So Honestly, at this point, I love the CFL, and I don't see anything changing. Um, and, I, and I hope to be with the Rough Riders, and at least in the CFL, for the rest of my career. Did your wife know she was sitting beside Sarah Kawana when she was <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a good question, too. She had no idea until uh, afterwards Sarah tweeted out, like, perks of sitting next to the QB's wife. And so then they had a few back and forth conversations and they both totally had no idea that they were sitting next to each other. But uh, my wife's always like, my biggest regret is not saying anything to her. But now they've shoken up a few conversations. And so hopefully next time we get them sitting next to each other, they'll be able to talk. Sarah has been with your wife. Will you do an interview with us? What? Oh, Sarah has been on your YouTube channel. Our Will YouTube channel. When are you too Will your wife do an interview with us when she comes up? Yeah, of course. Um, anytime she comes up. I mean, she's here right now. If you want to ask her a question. Maybe, we can do Maybe next time. She's, she's in online class, but. Um, here she is. <laughs> hello. Um... Ask her a question. Uh, tough. Tough question. A tough question, too. Our dad's just said, um, what is what Rider Nation treated you like so far? What has Rider Nation treated you like so far? How have they treated you? They've been seriously so amazing. All the love and support, everything I post, everything about Cody, it just makes me feel so blessed that we get the opportunity to call them like our second family and go up there. I'm so excited for this season to start just to get back up there and to celebrate with them and see all the green and it's just an amazing experience. Would you, would you make Regina your home? Would we make Regina our home? Good question. Yeah, it's hard because our entire family is in uh, the United States, but with Regina and the support and everything we get from there, we love that it's our second home. And so we love splitting the time evenly between being with our family and being with our second family uh, up in Saskatchewan. Too cold. <laughs> Someone said too cold. Yeah, it is. It is very cold. <laughs> Do you find it strange? Okay, back to class. She's got to go to class, but thanks for gr for grueling it down on her. Do you find it strange that you... Who asked it? Okay, uh, so, 
Mika's, I don't know if I'm saying this right, don't blame me. Mika's son asks, do you find it strange that you are an inspiration to so many kid, young kids? My son, is, my son, who is 12 year old, 12, joined the flag football team and chose your number. Wow. You see, it's the things like that that uh, make me put, it puts a smile on my face, honestly. With the platform I'm given and being a professional athlete, I want to be able to be an inspiration to as many kids and even adults as I can. Because I know when I was growing up, I looked up to so many athletes, uh, Brett Favre, Tim Tebow, guys like that, that I looked up to and, and I never met them. But just watching them, how they carry themselves, how they played the football game, like just inspired me to want to be good. And so having those guys, uh, I, that's kind of been my thing I wanted to be able to pass the torch to the younger generation because I think football does a lot for especially the youth you learn so much you learn team organization you learn how to bond with other people so uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of all the little kids coming up to me but I think that my favorite thing is when uh, someone comes up to me and says that they were in their backyard pretending to be me throwing the football because I did the same exact thing when I was a kid so it just kind of uh, hits home when uh, little ones tell me that. Brady Vind, Vind Vogel, a Vogel asks, what do you think of the nickname Jesus Sprinkles? <laughs> I love it. Um, I personally didn't think it was going to take off as much as it did when I, when I first said it. But um, last year, we definitely had a lot of Jesus Sprinkles. And for me to be kind of deemed the Jesus Sprinkle guy has been pretty cool. Um, the reason why is because it's brought more enlightenment to Jesus and to my faith. And I think uh, a lot of us could use more faith in our life and a lot more positivity. And so I'm glad I can kind of bring that to, to everyone. Um, in, uh, sorry for saying wrong. Um, in, in Amber Re Re Rena 99 says, she remembers your servant days. Yeah, so Servite was my high school, um, and we were a pretty good football team. My senior year, we won the state championship, and we were ranked number one in California and number three in the nation. And so uh, it's just something they look back on, and just knowing that being able to win a state championship title in high school was a pretty, pretty cool experience, and I got a pretty nifty ring out of it. So this person just said, uh, I don't know how I pronounce this right, but it's like, I think, I don't know. They said clean 18, I think, I forget. She, they said for Dardo for pre, Premier Sask. <laughs> you know, I've gotten that quite a few times. Um, I think when the football days are all said and done, I've, I've looked into getting into the political office. And the reason why is because I just feel like I can – uh, bring some positive light to it. Uh, I don't know as much as I should know about the po politics, but um, any way you can help change the world. And when football is over, I'm going to be looking for that next opportunity to kind of use a platform. So maybe that's the opportunity if I don't get into coaching and try and change the youth. But um, it's definitely a possibility. And But I think you've got to be a Canadian citizen to run for the premier. If you and your wife are playing a board or, or card game, what are you play, going to play? Alex. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, we've been playing gin run, rummy a lot recently. Just a, a simple card game. The problem with a lot of the games nowadays is it's so hard to find two player games. And yeah. like you can play Monopoly, but it's so much better when you have a bigger group. I uh, probably the wor the most mad my wife's ever got at me was when we were playing the board game Risk. Have you guys ever played Risk? No, I haven't. No. Okay, it's the game of world domination, and it basically ruins relationships. <laughs> and so um, I basically told her one thing, and I went back on my word and attacked her, her troops, and it was just all bad from there. So I don't think we'll ever play a game like Risk ever again. <laughs> and every single board game for uh, me and Tom is Risk. <laughs> what, what board games do you guys play? Um... I crushed him in Scrabble. No, he can, oh, nice. he can barely <laughs> help, dude. Uh, <laughs> he can barely write. <laughs> like, still, I can't tell. Um, are you and Coach Moss going to have a great season when it gets going? 
Yeah, the uh, changes we've made on the offense have been tremendous. So Coach Moss and I have been meeting once, sometimes twice a week, uh, implementing this new offense for our team. It's going to be nothing like we've ever had in the past. And I think the fans are really going to like it. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to put a lot of points on the board, have a lot of yards. And uh, we're just going to get the ball in our playmakers' hands. And I think that's something we did fairly well last year was just let the good, the talented guys who are a lot more athletic than me have the ball and score touchdowns. Uh, who's, what is your favorite color and who is your favorite teammate? <laughs> um, my favorite color has got to be turquoise. I really like turquoise. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a pastel guy, so I like bright colors. Like around this time, the spring, Easter time, um, I love these colors. It just brightens my day and brings a smile to my face. My favorite um, person on the team has got to be Dan Clark. Even though he's in this uh, chat room, I, I got to say, he's probably one of the most positive guys I've met. I know that guy's always got my back. And honestly, if uh, when worst comes to worst, he's always going to be there to pull me through. And, and uh, something that stuck with me really closely and he, when he really, truly just won my heart over was after the West Final. After our last play of the game, uh, the way the game ended and I hit the goalpost, he came up to me and shared some very uh, inspirational and very meaningful words to me. And that's something I'll just remember for the rest of my life. And just having guys like that in my life uh, is truly inspirational. Um, Grayson 07 asks, why did you choose 17? Uh, yeah, good question. I, they just gave it to me when I got to college. So my whole life, uh, my favorite number was four. And I wore four in high school. And that was because I love Brett Favre. And then I got to uh, college and someone, one of the juniors had four. So they're like, here, freshman, take this number. And so when I first got the number, I was like, 17, that number kind of sucks. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make it my own. And then I really uh, grew fond of the number and just kind of been with me since. Um, the funny thing is I was actually number seven in Pop Warner. So it's been an easy transition from 17 to seven because I've worn the number seven before. Football Boy 2009, Ron, Saskatchewan Rough Riders forever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have you been to Lambeau Field? I have. Yeah. You have? No, I've, I haven't been to any NFL games. I mean, I played in uh, three preseason games, but uh, in terms of attending an NFL game, I've never been. Where else have you guys been? Uh, we've been, we've yeah. been a lot of places. Yeah, actually. we had a tour of the NFL stadium. It was really good. Yeah. I noticed in your thing, does your thing said you're a Raider fan? Are you guys Raider fans? I was. You are. I know I am. <laughs> I have, I have, oh, nice. I have a collection of Brett Favre. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I have a, um, uh, a Derek Carr Pop Funko in my bedroom. So. Nice. Equally, equally, it's an equal pit playing field when it comes to yeah. Um, what um, Brady Vine de Vogel asks, what is it like going from a backup to most to a most ex most outstanding player candidate? Yeah, that's uh, life happens so fast. Um, you know, one minute you're preparing as the backup, and then three plays later you have to fill in as a starting quarterback. And then my biggest thing was when I got my opportunity to start because I was in the league for five years and I, I never had a starting, uh, I never started a game. I told myself if I ever got an opportunity to start a game that I was going to personally try everything I can. So I didn't regret it. And so looking back on last year, like I gave everything, my heart and soul into last year. And um, it was a very cool experience taking my dad to the um, CFL awards and being able to walk the red carpet and letting him experience that. And honestly, every, every one of those things were just new to us, and it was really exciting. God's Plan 382-17609 asked, how do you feel about being on the Dallas Cowboys of the CFL? Yeah, you know, whenever I tell people like, uh, who ask me about the CFL and how our team is, I basically say that same thing. I say, look, the Rough Riders are Canada's team, just like the Cowboys is – uh, the America's team. So um, being a part of that is like I shared earlier is running out of the tunnel with a uh, sold out stadium, having fans recognize you at the grocery store, 
people reach out to you on Twitter. Like that's what's so cool about uh, being in the position that I'm at. But I think what's cool, the, the best part is being able to get to know fans. Um, in other places I've been, it's been hard to relate or get to know fans, but because Regina and Saskatchewan is so small and everyone's so close together, um, you're able to just get more personable with the fans. And that's really cool. Do you consider uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders Canada's team? What made that evident to you? <laughs> I think it was when I signed um, – when I signed in February, I've never, every year I signed in free agency or re-signed a contract, usually I would get like, you know, five or 10 retweets or a couple people would like mention something. But my Twitter and social media absolutely blew up and it was from people all over. And so I think the second thing was when I really realized it was when we traveled to away games and we played in opponent stadiums, we had a lot more fans than they did in some places. And that was true evident that, Rough Rider fans are all over Canada and even in the U.S. And so wherever we go, we know that we're going to have their support. And so that's when I truly knew that this was Canada's team. Um, do you laugh when you see a Riders jersey at another sports event, like an NBA game or an MLB game? I honestly love it, and I encourage everyone to do it. My aunt um, was at the – Ducks hockey game a couple months ago and she wore her Rough Riders jersey because I told her about how fans try and wear jerseys to these games and so she's like I'm representing and I and I just find that so cool I remember last year um, for the finals in Toronto there was two Rough Rider fans who were sitting courtside with their Rough Rider jerseys on and that was awesome to see. Did she meet uh, Ryan Getzlaff or the set the um, I don't think I've, I think we've exchanged, but I haven't like personally got to talk with him. Has he been on your show? Uh, no, I wish. I mean, I got, <laughs> I've only gotten one, uh, uh, I've only gotten one NHL player, uh, Ryan Reeves, but besides that, no. Do you have Let's hope to change that. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it? like to redshirt under Colin Kaepernick in Nevada? Yeah, it was um, so cool because I learned so much from him. He is just a freak athlete. He can do pretty much anything he puts his mind to. And so just being able to have a year to learn under him and uh, the way he ran the offense, um, I knew I wanted to tailor my game towards that. But uh, he is just, like I said, freakishly athletic. So there's a lot of things I couldn't do that he only he could do. But being able to learn – how he kind of just uh, um, balanced classwork to football to working out um, was definitely very beneficial for me. And it helped me transition into a starting quarterback the next year as a redshirt freshman, as opposed to taking me a couple of years to just kind of get uh, my feet wet. Garrett Andre asked, do you watch hockey? If so, what's your favorite team? I um, have been to two hockey games. One has been the Ducks versus the Kings because I'm from uh, Orange County, California, and that was pretty awesome. And then the other, uh, when I was in Toronto, I went to a Maple Leafs game, and that was uh, nothing like I've ever been to before. I mean, the Leafs game was tremendous. I personally don't have a favorite team. If I were to say, I would say the Anaheim Ducks because that's in my backyard, but I don't follow it closely enough just to know um, who my favorite team is. Um, I'm a Vegas fan, so uh, Brady. I just thought this was funny. Brady Vindavogel said, "I got a Norman Roosevelt jersey a week before he was signed to the Montreal Montreal." <laughs> it was uh, a Kyrie jersey when he was signed, like two months later. What did you, you and your wife? Think of Musha, Deja Vu, Milkshakes, Musha Spa. We, uh, we didn't get to go. So after that, our whole plan was to go. And they were completely booked up, the, the Musha Spa. Um, and we heard nothing but great things about Deja Vu with their uh, 100 different wing flavors and their 100 different milkshake flavors. So next this year is definitely going to be a, a spot for us to go. I dropped the ball as a husband by not planning ahead. So after the game, when I called in, um, and I even tried to drop my name, and it didn't carry any weight. So you can tell that Moose Jaw Spa is a pretty uh, high-populated area. 
We have friends in your show. Maybe we can do it in an episode with you. Yeah, maybe, and maybe you guys can get me into the spa with your guys' clout. Yeah, we've been to <laughs> plenty of, we've been, we've got about like five videos in your show. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that would be fun. We do a spa, a spa, a spa day video. Yeah, we've actually been asking you to do this for a while, an episode, because, like, at first we asked you, I think we DM'd you uh, before, and then we, then you, I, we saw you at the Rush game, I asked, yeah. and I, it was like we this. Kept on, and we kept on going and going, and started asking. Yeah, the thing I'll say about this, and even to all the fans who are watching, it's sometimes it's hard to track all the direct messages I get because they sometimes just there's so many at some points where it's just hard to track. So um, I remember I told you guys to direct message me and I was looking for it and I honestly couldn't find it. So um, when the Rough Riders reached out to me about doing like a media week, um, they mentioned you guys and I was like, I've been promising you guys that I'd be on this show for a long time. So I was glad we were able to get it worked out. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, who was your favorite player in the NFL before you were a kid? Didn't you say Brett Favre? Yeah, Brett Favre was definitely my favorite player. And then uh, my favorite college football player was Tim Tebow. I love watching both those guys play. Um, so, and then when you get to the NFL, it's very interesting because you're now you're like heroes and the people you looked up to are now your competitors and people you have to play against. So it's definitely an interesting thing when you, some of your heroes are now your competitors. Yeah. How are you keeping in touch with your brother, Corey, and the rest of your family? Yeah, usually I'll, I'll try and call and check in. Um, FaceTime's been really good for us, too. Uh, for my birthday last week, we did, like, a huge um, Zoom, which is, like, FaceTime, and we had, like, 12 of my closest friends on there. And we played, like, a, a game on there that just basically you do certain things. It was, like, Jeopardy or, like, a quiz about each other, and so – it was fun because we were able to see each other's faces and just see their interactions. Sometimes when you talk on the phone or you text, you don't get those facial expressions that you get when you do a FaceTime. So I personally like the FaceTime just because it feels a little bit more personable. Yeah, Zoom. Both are really good. Um, what are your hobbies outside of football? Yeah, um, video games. I've played a lot of video games. And yeah, yeah. Um, that and obviously working out is saying uh, I love board games. That's like my thing. Any game, it uh, doesn't matter if it's a board game or like a virtual game, like something that keeps me entertained uh, mentally is good. I, uh, I told myself this year I want to learn the piano. So I think that's going to be one of my new hobbies um, this upcoming year is trying to learn how to play the piano because I want to be more musically talented because I am not very talented. <laughs> uh do you – what video games do you play? And do you have an Xbox? Um, yeah, I got an Xbox, and I've been playing um, PUBG, so Player Underground. And okay. I've – it's like uh, – it's basically like all the other stuff where it's the um, – you're just dropped out of a plane, and then you're with like 100 people, and you just got to survive. What's yeah. So uh, I think it's Wolfpack QB17. Yeah, me and my brother have, uh, we'll DM you our usernames. Yeah, DM me your username. I also play Madden, but my wife kind of banned me from Madden because I get so upset <laughs> because <laughs> it's just not realistic sometimes. Like, I know when they're running a certain defensive coverage and I, and I throw a certain pass that it should be a completion, and then all of a sudden the guy intercepts it. So um, it's hard to play video games like that when you know a little bit more than you should. So it's just very frustrating, and I get pretty upset. So she's like, yeah, no more Madden for me. It's kind of like that was me in NHL 20. Yeah. There you go, yeah. I'm just like, I take my pass and I try to do some controls and won't work. In NBA 20, when I play, it's literally, I'm trying to, I try I try and slam dunk, and then this guy literally puts his hand through the ball. I'm like, what? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, and then you watch the replay, and you're like, no way that ever happens in real life. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can't just put your hand through a, ma a basketball. Yeah. That yeah. Oh, yeah, that could be very frustrating. I could see your point, for sure. Like, it's a lot more easier in real life playing hockey for me than it is in that NHL. <laughs> 
Come on, Ben. I'll just throw at him. Maybe you can coach us. Sorry, say that one more time. You cut it in out. Bob Bamstrom has challenged us to Madden. Maybe you can coach us. Yeah, maybe. Um, if my wife lets me play again. But, uh, yeah, for sure, I'll coach you guys up. What was it like when you and Shaq Evans got the name Shaq, Shaq, Shaq Ordo? Oh, yeah. So, uh, that was pretty funny by the – I believe the CFL started it. So, have you guys ever heard of Sharknado? The uh, yeah, so it's kind of like a spinoff of that, right? And using both of our last name, or uh, yeah, our his first name and my last name. Um, it's just cool when when the the media teams think of things like that because I would never think of anything like that, and it's impressive how they do that. And it also gives something for the fans to relate to, or just something funny or quirky that the fans can uh, smile about. So I love it. Do you have a favorite, Cody? Do you have a favorite Bible verse? Yeah, it's actually tattooed on my wrist here, which is, let me see if I can show you guys, which is James 4.10. So James 4.10 is humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. So basically what that means to me is like God can see me wherever I go. And so if I try and be one person in one place, but another person in another place, he's going to know. So I try and humble myself in all platforms of life. Doesn't matter if I'm on the football field or off the football field. Um, and for that, honestly, it has helped me grounded in the best of times. And it's helped me help pull me through in kind of the worst of times. And so every time I, I'm just struggling or something good happens, you know, I look down at my tattoo and it just kind of reminds me to, to stay grounded. Tom, what are your hobbies? Besides football, what other sports do you like? I love baseball. Um, that was probably my first passion was baseball. And I played all the way until high school. My sophomore year, I decided to quit baseball because I wanted to focus on football, which is one of the biggest regrets. Um, even though I've made it this far in football, I think uh, being able to play multiple sports trains multiple muscle groups. So when you just focus solely on football, you're only limiting yourself to just football training. But when you play another sport like hockey, basketball, or baseball, you're able to train other muscles and become a better overall athlete. So um, I wish I was able to play baseball the rest of my high school career and then focus on football. So, but yeah, baseball is my uh, number one, uh, not my number one, but my other sport that I love. Your Tom just had to go to the washroom. Uh... How how will the Angels do when the season starts? This was our year to win the World Series. I know that for sure. Um, but now with all the delays and stuff, I just wish the Angels got a little bit more pitching because our offense is very strong and they put up a lot of runs. But uh, they lose a lot of games like 9 to 10 or 12 to 7. Um, so I just wish the Angels had a little bit better pitching. But uh, other than that, I'm I'm really excited, and every year I say it, and I say that the Angels are going to win the World Series, and I feel that this is our year that we're going to win the World Series. Yeah. Um, Shohei ready to pitch this year? Um, I think so. Yeah, the the plan that they got him on is that he's going to be ready to pitch, and he's going to pitch a lot more than he has in the past, which is really exciting because uh, he's a dangerous pitcher, but he's also a really good hitter. Um, the only thing that's different is because they play in the AL that if he was in the NL and he was a pitcher and able to hit, it'd be a lot, he'd be a lot better for the team. Um, but the fact that when he pitches, he's not able to hit, uh, kind of hurts the team sometimes too, because he's got such a good bat that, uh, I wish that sometimes the, the angels were in the NL so that we can use him as a pitcher and a hitter. Ask questions for one last. <laughs> nice. Love the enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is good. Did you uh, get a degree in college? I did. I got my business management degree. So I always have had a fascination with money, as we all do. We all love money, right? Um, so I just figured I wanted to learn more about where my money goes or how to spend my money or how to invest my money. And uh, honestly, be, having, being a business major, uh, is like the jack of all trades because there were so many things I learned 
um, that go down to, you know, negotiating stuff or how to apply for a loan or how to do certain things like how to write for, you know, how to rent a house. So there's a lot of things in that aspect. And then there's a lot of things like I do my own investing. And uh, so there's a lot where I don't have to pay somebody to invest for me, which is nice because I'm educated enough to do my own investing. What is your favorite Servite memory? So we, um, our biggest rival is called Modern Day High School. And we lost to them 20 years in a row. And my senior year, we beat them for the first time in 20 years. And that was like the biggest weight off our uh, school's shoulders, and especially mine. And so that's got to be my uh, my favorite memory. We always play them usually in like Angel Stadium because we get such a big crowd uh, because it's such a big rivalry. And uh, that's definitely probably my favorite memory of, uh, of high school. I just want to make a shout out to a good guy. Hi, Bob Millett. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> did you uh, buy stocks in Zoom? In Zoom? Yeah. Did you say, no, I, I didn't buy any stocks. I wish I would have known. But the problem was nobody kind of knew how bad this was going to get. Um, so I wish I would have done that or I wish I would have bought a lot more, a lot earlier in, uh, when I was a lot younger. I mean, I started investing when I was 23, but I wish I started when I was like 20, 21 years old, even couple, a little bit of money because uh, it goes a long way. What are some of the COVID precautions going on where you, where you live? Yeah, so for us, we have um, an 8 p.m. curfew. So you can't be out past eight o'clock. And then a lot of the, like I said, the parks and tennis courts and stuff are locked up um, because they don't want to promote people going out and having like, uh, like soccer pickup games and stuff like that. So um, other than that, like just like everywhere else, the toilet paper is completely gone. Everyone bought out all the toilet paper. The grocery stores have, are getting a little bit better now. Um, but um, in terms of like, those are just kind of where we're at here in Maryland, because we're so close to DC that uh, it's pretty strict uh, where we're at. Uh, are you tired of watch, washing your hands yet? <laughs> no, but uh, I'm definitely gonna take this forward. And I think, I hope everyone does is, I wasn't very good at washing my hands in, in the first place. Like only when I'd go to the bathroom, obviously you'd wash your hands, but um, the amount of times I wash my hands now, I just feel so clean when I do it. And every time we leave the house, obviously we come back and wash our hands. So, um, I think if anything, it's going to create a better habit for me to wash my hands a lot more as I think a lot of people, what's that? And for a lot of people. So yeah, exactly. I forget what their username was, but someone said, uh, this was their highlight of the week. Nice. That's all. That's what it's all about, right? We just want to bring yeah. smiles to people's faces in these tough times. Yeah, yeah. We do this every Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Thursday next week. Thir oh, next week it's gonna be Monday, Thursday, Friday. No, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> okay, <it's> <laughs> that's what we're doing now. And then it goes back to back to Monday, Tuesday. I mean, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, now that I'm following you guys, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to connect with me. So um, I should be able to get your guys' direct messages yeah. a lot easier. Kai Rahan underscore memes and Cody the and then put emoji of a goat. <laughs> <laughs> the chat again, like way earlier. What's reason, that? I remember him putting that in the chat way earlier. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> Corey. Uh, for a lot, we're doing Corey Churko from Shania Twain on Monday. Um, what song do you sing when you're washing your hands? Um, I am a terrible singer, but uh, <laughs> so I try not to sing as much as I can. Um, but usually when I first learned to wash my hands, it was the happy birthday song. So I feel like I've been singing happy birthday to myself uh, very often. So I'm looking for something new. So if you got any suggestions, let me know. Um, oh, so Fajardo.meme wants you to follow him. He just said, follow me. It was kind of <laughs> <laughs> that happened, actually. We don't really have any 
trouble with being too popular. Uh, Garrett Andre has our last question. What excites you about the offense this year? Yeah, I think it's because uh, Coach Moss really excites me about this offense. The passion he has for the game and how much he, he's willing to work and make this offense the best in the league. Um, also, his track rec record as an offensive coordinator, he's had the leading passer uh, in the league the last you know four years that he's been the offense coordinator. So I'm really excited just to be able to work under him and uh, learn as much as I can from him. And, and I think the coolest part about it is he played the CFL quarterback position. And anytime you have a coach that actually played in the CFL – at the, at the position you're at, you learn so much more. So I think he's going to be a huge addition for our offense, and we're going to be pretty darn good. So for the song, you can do this. Someone just said this in the comments. You can do this. Green is the color. The poop on your side. Side. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll have, to, I'll have to memorize that completely and then do it. For $20. It's on the Rogers website with yeah. the music. It's with the music. I'm We'll put a link in the YouTube version of this. Yeah, let's yes. So we'll put a link in the YouTube version. For twenty dollars, uh, all proceeds go to coronavirus. Um, relief. For relief, relief. Uh, and thank you for joining. Uh, bye, bye. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. I had a lot of fun with you guys today. Thank you for uh, like. Joining us today, uh... <laughs>